morning and welcome to our online Sunday service on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. We continue to give God glory and the praise for giving us this privilege and opportunity to continue to worship Him. For the scripture in Isaiah reminds us, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. From Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. We look to the Lord and give him the praise that is due unto him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. For you are God, your sovereign. And you continue to fulfill your plans and purposes. And we submit and surrender our lives to you. Come, O God, lead us as we continue to worship. Help us, O Lord, to worship in spirit and in truth. To experience transformation of our lives for your glory and praise. For this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord as we sing the opening song. Continuation of the Holy Gospel as it is written according to St. Mark chapter 3 verses 31 to 35. Glory to Christ our Saviour. St. Mark 
chapter 3 verses 31 to 35. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. And the crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you as your children, as you have given us your Holy Spirit, to whom we can call you Abba Father. Come, Lord, and minister to us, speak to us, speak into our lives, that our lives will be changed and transformed. Come, Holy Spirit, speak the truth that will set us free to live a life of freedom for your glory and grace. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Journey with Jesus through the Gospel of Mark, part 16, based on Mark chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. It's been a journey truly with Jesus, journey of reflecting about the life of Jesus, about the ministry of Jesus. But as we focus and look to Jesus, our heart's desire should be to be transformed, to become more and more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So today as we journey on, we think and consider about the concept of family. The word family may mean similar things for many of us, but for some of us, the word family may mean quite different. For some, family can just be a nuclear family, just within the close-knit family alone. But for some, family means the extended family, relatives, and even friends become part of family. So what is the whole concept of biblical family, as it were? How did Jesus look at the whole concept of family in that sense? So as we journey with Jesus, we come across an incident. In Mark chapter 3, verses 31 to 32, that reveals about the connection about blood family. In Mark chapter 3, verse 31 to 32, it says, And his mother and his brothers came. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him, and a crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. So we come across this incident where his mother and his brothers, Jesus' mother and his brothers came. And the Bible says that they were standing outside. This may puzzle some people who probably do not understand really about the family of Jesus, or what we know as the earthly family of Jesus. Did Jesus have a family? Did he have siblings? Yes. Did he have Parents, yes. The scripture reveals this. There are those who teach doctrines that are against this whole concept that the scripture teaches, that he did not have siblings, that he did not have brothers and sisters who were related to him in that sense. So, But the scripture in Matthew chapter 13, verses 55 and 56, reveals this very clearly. This was the testimony given by the Jews at that time. People who knew about Jesus, who knew about his family, who knew about his background. This was their pronouncement. They say this, is not this the carpenter's son? The carpenter referring to Jesus' father, the earthly father, Joseph. Is not his mother called Mary? This is his mother's name, Mary. 
And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? So as they make this proclamation, this revelation, as it were, they are revealing about the family, the earthly family of Jesus, in a sense of blood family, through Mary. His earthly family is revealed to us. And this family, and particularly the mother and the brothers, they have come and they are standing outside. And the scripture says, they sent to him and called him. Here was family, the family of Jesus. As I said, the earthly family of Jesus calling out to him. And this news comes to him as he is seated among a crowd. A crowd was sitting around him. He was not alone. He was not away from the crowd. He was sitting and ministering in the midst of the crowd. He was doing what God had called him to do. And here comes this invitation or a call, calling out to Jesus. And then news reaches Jesus. Someone conveys that message saying, your mother and your brothers are outside. Not only are they outside, they are seeking you. Your mother and your brothers are outside. They are seeking you. Imagine the whole scenario. Have probably not been able to see them for such a period of time, probably a long period of time, we are not sure. But he's meeting them and having this opportunity to meet them after a period of time. We are familiar, obviously, with this phrase that says, blood is thicker than water referring to the power of relatives and relationship, family, how important, how crucial is family, that blood is thicker than water, reminds us of this kind of relationship. So when we think about family, blood relations, family that God has given to us, yes, we are called to rejoice in the blessing of family. And we are called to love our family, to care for one another, parents to care for their children, children to care for their parents, siblings to love one another. This is the family concept that God intended and created. But yet we are very aware that there is no perfect family. There is no perfect fa family here on this earth. But here, Jesus is reached out by his own family. His mother and brothers came seeking him. But as we read the verses before, in Mark chapter 3, verse 21, we are told what is their impression and what is the reason that they come seeking Jesus. They've already said this, and this has become news, that they consider that Jesus is out of his mind. Jesus has gone crazy. He is not in control of his own life. So the reason they came seeking Jesus was not to catch up once again, was not to fellowship with him once again. They have already said in verse 21, they went out to seize him in the sense of arresting Jesus, stopping Jesus from doing what he was already doing, ministering, preaching, healing, delivery. He, they were there to seize him, the Bible says, to stop him from doing what God wanted him to do. This was family, yes, but the family who did not understand what he was called to do. And this, in a sense, speaks about what Jesus proclaims in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Here were the family of Jesus, the earthly family of Jesus. His brothers who grew up with him, his mother who brought him up from young, who gave birth to him. But here was blood relatives, blood relation, who did not understand 
the purpose that God had through Jesus' life. And they were not only there to see him, but they were there to stop him, to stop him from doing what God wanted him to do. And they became the enemies in that sense, the ones who resisted the work of God in the life of Christ. And this is the reality sometimes we as Christians may face from our closest family members, our loved ones, where they oppose us for our faith. They oppose us because of our love for the Lord, for our desire to do what God has called us to do. As we respond to God, we may be put into situations where we have to choose family or God. Family or God's ministry. And this is a very difficult decision that some of us have gone through or some of us may be going through at this point of time. But Jesus helps us to make that decision, that make decision that is very clear. What is our priority? So when we think of persecution and our being persecuted by our own family, one of the examples, real life examples that we can think about is the life of Sadhu Sundar Singh. We know about his ministry and how he traveled to many places and how he reached out through a very unique life. But he was one who was persecuted by his own family. He was even poisoned by his own family members. When they gave him food, they put poison into this food. But here, as he struggled to obey his parents, who said no to following Jesus, but on the other hand, he knew what has really transpired in his life. The call of God and the encounter of God with God was so real and so powerful that he made a choice. He made a decision that as much as blood is thicker than water, blood cannot be thicker or more important, more crucial than God himself. The principle that we learn is to put God first. He is always number one in anything and everything. Above every person, every loved one that we have in our lives, God is always number one. Whether it be husband, wife, or as parents, we look to our children. Whether it be our siblings, our relatives, whoever they may be, they are God-given family, but we cannot and should not Put them above God in any situation. Our Lord is number one. And we give him priority above our blood family. And this is what Jesus goes on to emphasize as he responds to this question. Beyond blood family, we need to prioritize God and God's family. In Mark chapter 3, verses 33 to 35, particularly reading, 34 and 35, and looking about at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. So this was in response to the invitation or the information that comes to Jesus, that your mother and your brother's are seeking you. So Jesus answered them in response to that call or invitation. He answers them with a question, rather. And the question goes like this Who are my mother and my brothers? As we read this, it, it, it's very disturbing. It seems like he is rejecting his family. But if that's not the case, there is a more powerful message that the Lord is sending out. He's aware of the reason that they are there. Probably those who were there were not really aware of the reason that his mother and brothers have come. They think that he has gone crazy and they are there to seize him, to stop him. But Jesus now expands the whole horizon of their understanding as he teaches those who are seated around him. He says, who are my mother and brothers? 
Then in essence, Jesus is asking this question, who belongs to his family? Who belongs to the family of Christ? Who belongs to Jesus? Who belongs to God's family? The family that is surrounded or surrounded by Jesus. That is part of the body of Christ, the family of God as it were. Who belongs to the family? Who qualifies? And Jesus does not only ask the question, he also answers the question. And the question is answered by himself. Looking about at those who sat around him. Because this is a message for them. This is a message that they need to realize. A message that they need to accept and understand. He said to them, having asked who, now he says, this is the answer. Here are my mother and my brothers. He's referring to those who are seated around him. His blood relatives, his blood family is standing outside. But here he speaks to those who are seated around him. And he says, you are my family. You are the one who are part of my family. You are the mother, my mother, my brothers. And why does Jesus say this? See, when we think of church, we think of the whole concept of church, family. The word church usually is understood or referred to the church building. When we say church, it's about the building itself. You know, the structure or how old is the church? Where we are going, you say, I'm going to church. As much as it is true, but that is a real, real meaning is much more than that. The church, in essence, is not the building. The church is the people. So today people complain and grumble. The church is locked down. The church is closed. Yes, the physical building is closed. But the church, the biblical church, is still open. We are the church. We are the people of God. We are the family of God. We are the family in Christ. We are the body of Christ. So we are still functioning. Wherever we are, in whichever way, we are still able to commune and fellowship together through this online platform that God has given to us in the midst of these restrictions that we have. The church building is not the church ultimately. The people of God, the family of God, is ultimately the church. We, you, all of us together, we are the people of God. In the words of Rick Warren, he says, your spiritual family is even more important than your physical family because it will last forever. I repeat this again. Our spiritual family is even more important than your physical family. In no way we are saying our physical family is not important. But what is being emphasized is the importance of the spiritual family, the family in God, in Christ. The reason it is more important because it will last forever. This is an eternal family that we belong to, that we become part of. We all come from different backgrounds different scenarios, different status in society, in community, different experiences. But what binds us together is we all call God our Father. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Father in God. And in God, we are all God's children, whoever we may be. But in God, we are all children of God. We have been given the right to become children of God. And that makes us family in God, family in Christ. And that brings us together. And that's where Jesus goes on to say, here, he does not only end by saying, here are my mother and my brothers. He goes on to say, how do we become part of that family of God? He says, whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Whoever does the will of God. It's not only having a Christian name or a baptism alone, but it is much more than that. It's about living and doing the will of God. Knowing it and doing it. But many of us struggle. 
struggle with the struggle, what is known as God's will versus your will. We desire to be part of God's church, but we want to just do our will. What we think is right, what we think is the best based on our understanding and our experience, we are not seeking God's will. But Jesus puts this very plainly to his hearers then and to us today. He says, to be part of God's family is to do God's will. That means wherever we come from, whichever background, whoever we are, but ultimately what brings us together is God and his will, his purpose, his goal for our lives, his mission for the church. How do we know, how can we understand what God's will is? How do we come to discern this will? There are these three steps. But a three-step test to know God's will. This may be very simple, but very helpful. Because this helps us to understand, to be able to discern. It's not rocket science, as it were. It's something that is so simple that we can do it on our own, wherever we are. But much more importantly, as we come together, we learn to seek God more. And what are these three steps? as we discover God's will. First is to pray. Pray seeking to know his will. Not make decisions and say, God, let it be your will, but rather seeking him and to know his will. Lord, what is your desire? What is your plan? What is your will in this matter? And the second step that we can take is to read his word, to know his will, to know how God thinks, to know how God responds if we go back to his word, to go back to his written word. And God speaks by his spirit through his word so that we cannot, can never go off tangent. So we are always on the right track, praying to God, reading his word. But then the third step is very important, very crucial. Listen to him to discern his word. Listen to him to discern his will. But most of us start the other way around. We want God to listen to us to do our will. But here we are to pray, to read, to listen, to discern his will for our lives, for our church, for the mission, whatever God wants us to do, so that we are doing what God calls us to do, not our own will not our own purposes, but doing what God wants us to do. And today that's what it means to be the family of God, a family that does God's will. Sometimes we do things because it's tradition. We are used to doing it, so we will do it again. Last year we did it, we'll do it again. But we do it without really discerning what does God want us to do in this current times, in this season, as we live in the last days, we need to be discerning as the people of God, hearing, listening, knowing, and doing it. And that is what identifies us and makes us to be the family in Christ. The calling God our Father is not only words, but life. To believe and to live for Christ. And that's what really, truly makes us to become the family of God. So as we think and consider about the blood family, the relationships that God has given to us, we want to praise God and thank God for all our family members. We pray that God will continue to give us peaceful, harmonious relationship. But when there are times and situations when we have to make a choice to choose between family of God, there must be no hesitation to put God first. God above everything, every relationship. God's relationship takes primary role in our life. But as we come and experience God's love, Jesus says, we become part of God's family. We learn to do his will as we grow in God's family. So the body of Christ, the church, is God's family. We need to learn to embrace and accept 
one another as family, family in God, in a sense, also blood family, but through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, we are bound together. We come together. We are one in Christ. We are now God's family. Let us appreciate, treasure this family. Many of us long to come together, to worship together once again as a physical church. But as we come together as a physical church, remember, we are not going to come back as individuals, but we are going to come back as a family. So let us look forward to the reunion of the family in Christ. As we come together to worship, let's continue to encourage and edify, not live in silo, live as a solo Christian anymore, but let's appreciate the relationship and continue to journey together as a family in God. So as we journey with Christ, may God continue to transform our perspective of family so that we will truly embrace and be part of God's family to grow together in God's family for the glory of God. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we thank you that by your spirit, you teach us and you help us to understand. We thank you for the blessing of our families here on this earth, for blood family, for relations, relatives, loved ones, for our parents, for our children, for our siblings. We want to praise you, O oh God, for who they are in our lives. But above all our family and loved ones, Father, we put you first. We put you above every relationship. We submit to you and we desire to do your will as we are part of your family, O oh God, in Christ Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, bind us together. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. By the blood of Jesus, we are made children of God. And help us, O oh Father, to rejoice as we recognize this relationship that we share in Christ. Help us, Lord, to continue to build up, to edify, to encourage the body of Christ as we gather. We pray that you continue, Lord, to use us as your instruments to be peacemakers, to be builders, to build the kingdom of God in our midst. We submit, we surrender to you. Come, Holy Spirit, bring change and transformation in our lives for your glory and praise. For this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Let us continue to affirm our faith in God through the words of the Nicene Creed. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one in being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation will be going into a time of intercession and prayer. Jesus, 
the Son of the Living God, we come to your throne of grace. Father, we humble ourselves at your throne of grace, O oh Father. Lord Jesus, we just want to say we are sorry for the sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus, even as we come in this corporate worship, O oh Lord, Lord Jesus, let your grace and mercy be upon us even as we pray and uphold not only this nation, but each and every one of our prayers. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will pray for the world. We pray for the COVID situation in every part of the world to be seized out in Christ Jesus' name. We are called in prayer for the nation of Myanmar. Lord Jesus, we come as a church, O oh Lord, with the Junta uh, Government of Father, let your peace come upon the nation, O oh Lord, especially in the midst of this political turmoil, O oh Father. Let the people see your peace, O oh Father. We also pray that your name will be glorified, where new Christians will know that there is a living God among them who has given them the victory to come out of this political turmoil, O oh Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Malaysia, especially, O oh Lord, we want to thank you, Jesus, for the Malaysian to, for the Malaysians to be allowed after almost a year of father for all our cross border states to be open oh lord thank you son of the living god lord we also want to thank you for the 90% of the Malaysians to be vaccinated from school going children to adults oh lord Lord Jesus, we also want to thank you for all the frontliners who have worked tirelessly risking their lives during this pandemic. Lord Jesus, we just want to uphold the economic situation of this country and all the political leaders of Father. Lord, you know what is the best for this nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we want to pray for our diocese, especially the diocese of West Malaysia and our diocesan bishop, Stephen Abarau, Suffragan Bishop, Jason Selvaraj, Suffragan Bishop, designate Stephen So, retired bishops of the diocese, diocesan clergy, diocesan church workers, diocesan lay workers, and all who are serving in your ministry, O Lord Jesus, through this diocese, we commit them to your throne of grace. Lord, we pray especially for our clergy, Reverend Jaswinder Singh and his family, O Lord, especially for Sister Carol, and Joel to our Father for their, for their support at St. James Church, O Father. Thank you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your healing grace. Because we believe, O Lord, because you're a God who heals us. We pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. O oh Lord, let your precious blood of Father wash each and every one of them in their personal prayers as they pray for each other and for their loved ones, O oh Lord. Lord, we want to uphold those families who have lost their loved ones during the pandemic, O oh Father. Let the peace of Jesus Christ be upon each and every one of the families, O oh Lord, as they have lost their family members in this church of oh Father. 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, let us prepare our hearts to come to God in a time of confession. For the scriptures in Proverbs 28 verse 13 reminds us, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us spend a moment of silence to confess our sins in response to the word of God and the invitation from God. The general confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. In the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. As we confess our sins, we are assured of God's forgiveness in the words of the absolution. We receive his forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we receive God's forgiveness, we are reconciled with God and with one another. So we receive his peace as a gift from above. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share the sign of peace with our family members and continue to live our lives as peacemakers for the glory of God. As our Lord and Savior taught his disciples to pray, so we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing from God. May the resurrected Christ give you grace to grow in holiness as his disciples. To deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us now and always. Amen, amen, amen.
Let us pray the closing prayer, the prayer for our church together. Loving Father, guide us to remain in your love and to continue to love one another. Transform us to become like our Lord Jesus in thought, word, and deed. Lead us by your Holy Spirit to go forward in the mission of making disciples in our families, our church, our community, and beyond. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to bless the Lord together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the service today. Be blessed. Be a blessing for the glory of God. Amen.